In this video, we're going to look at the TechPower 8229, which is listed on the box that uh, it comes in as a better Maztec MS8229. This is a 4,000 count auto-ranging non-true RMS digital multimeter. It measures AC and DC potential as well as current, resistance, temperature. It has a relative humidity sensor on it, measures capacitance, continuity, diode testing, and it also measures sound intensity and light intensity. I got this little meter because I was curious to see if the strange behavior on the resistance ranges that we saw in the cheaper TP8268 video that we did previously, to see if that behavior survived in the more expensive 8229 model. Another reason I got this unit is because it includes light and sound measurement. And these are things that I would like to have in order to do some work um, that I'm planning to do in the future. It arrived today, and I have to say that although I was skeptical, so far it's much better than the cheaper model. Before diving into the performance of the meter, I have to say that the manual is larger and much better written than the cheaper model, but it still has its issues. For one thing, there are warning boxes in sections of the manual that are unrelated to the topic matter of the sections. To honor their copyright, I'm not going to show examples of this, and it's mostly benign anyway, but it would be nice that if manufacturers are going to go to the trouble of producing a manual, and writing it in English, and the English is much improved in this manual, it would be nice if the manual was put together in a sensible way. At least in this manual, they refer to megahertz and not millohertz. Also, this manual doesn't specify up front anyway that this is actually a 400 count meter. I had to measure that myself by sweeping through voltage ranges on the bench. I found it eventually in small print buried in the middle of page 31 of the manual. Now on to more meaningful things. First of all, it's got a fairly nice appearance. It's very easy to see the different selections on the switch. The switch is very crisp, if you like that, and, and I do. It doesn't get stuck in the middle when you know when you've selected a particular reading. Uh, it's got a two-position stand, so for example, goes upright like this, but you can also lay it down so that it's more at an angle, at a lower angle. Uh, and that's that's pretty nice uh, if, you know, depending on your, your work environment. And then finally, it's it's really built solidly. I mean, this, this doesn't give at all. It's got a nice feel. The plastic doesn't feel as cheap as the plastic from the more inexpensive model. And, and it feels solid. I, I suspect that, um, you know, if you drop this, it's, it's not going to bust into a thousand pieces. Um, although the engineering is not the greatest. If you look at this edge on, you can see that if it fell like this, a lot of the energy would be taken up by the ribs here and here. And yet the selector switch protrudes above those. Uh, and so you would probably damage the meter anyway. So, you know, come on guys, just think a little bit about engineering when you design these things. As far as accessories, this comes with the same very much less than adequate leads that the cheaper model came with. And so in this video, we're going to use uh, some, some higher quality leads to check this out. Uh, it comes with a K-type temperature probe, and it also comes with a carrying case, which is frankly cheaply built but it's a nice touch it's going to protect the meter you know if you throw it in your toolbox or whatever and i think it's just you know it's a nice thing an unusual but nice feature is an ambient temperature sensor and display that's right on the face of the of the meter so this is displayed all the time which you could imagine would be uh, nice or obnoxious it depends on your personal taste uh, i kind of find it nice and another thing that it comes with is this relative humidity reading. Uh, in this case, it says 47% here on my bench. And that's really nice as well. You know, when you think about it, moisture and electricity really don't mix. So being able to monitor the uh, moisture level or the humidity level in your work area makes some amount of sense. One somewhat annoying thing about the temperature sensor is that it's selectable between Celsius and Fahrenheit, which is nice. Uh, but if you select Fahrenheit, and then you turn the meter off, 
turn it back on again, it reverts to Celsius. So uh, too bad for those of us in North America. Uh, and another thing that uh, that you see is that it you know it fluctuates a fair amount, and uh, so you know it's probably not the most stable thing that you could have on your bench. Uh, but you know you know it's 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 nice enough to give an idea. Another nice feature on this is the light meter, which measures light intensity in units of lux. We'll return to this in a couple of minutes, but I just want to say now that it's got a very nice range that uh, goes from just lux units to tens of lux units. All right, so let's get to the electrical side of this meter. Uh, looking at the resistance, current, and potential readings, we can use our little DMM checker here as a standardized source, uh, standard at least for this bench. So let's turn this on and go to the ohms reading. As I said, we're not using the probes that came with these. We're using probes with gold-plated tips. Uh, these are the same ones that come with Ryman meters. Uh, so looking at the 100 ohm uh, standard resistor here, we see that uh, comes right up to 100 ohms. Bang on, 1K resistor. Uh, we come to within one or two ohms of that. Uh, the 10K resistor comes straight up to 10K, no problems. And then the 100K resistor, whoops, comes up to 100K, no problems. So this meter is within specifications on its resistance ranges. So let's go to now DC, whoops, to, to DC voltage. And so let's measure the voltage here. This should come up straight away to five uh, uh, volts, and it does uh, right off the bat, and that's that's fine. That's exactly what it should read. Now let's uh, let's go to current. We have to change the probe jacks here. So now we're on milliamps, and we're going to look at the milliamp source, and this should come to 1.0 milliamps straight away, and it does. So that's good. This meter is actually very impressive in terms of accuracy, especially given the quoted specified accuracy of the manual, which I won't go into here. It's nothing to write home about. It's actually a little bit worse than the cheaper model, uh, but it's, it's more than adequate. I don't have an AC source producing a sinusoidal signal and since this is not a true rms meter the square wave signal that i have from the dmm checker uh, will not lead to a meaningful reading but i have off camera used function generator to generate a 60 hertz sinusoidal signal with uh, voltage as determined by several other meters that I have confidence in, and they suggest that the AC voltage reading on this meter is, is in fact accurate and within specifications, at least for the voltage and current readings at low values. Okay, so let's get to the non-standard stuff. And first, let's look at sound intensity. Note the ambient source uh, of noise here in my workshop is in the 30 dB range. So let's see, um, let's turn a, a noise source on. And this is going to be an FM radio, uh, just tuned to a dead spot in the band. So this should be, you know, approximately white noise. So that settles down into the mid 40 range. And I'm going to turn this up a bit and just show that the dB levels go up in a smooth way. So we see that the meter behaves 
reasonably. You know, it goes up when you turn the, the volume of white noise up and it goes down when it goes down. And in a quiet room, it turns out to be about 30 dB of ambient noise, which is, um, which is actually what you would expect for a quiet room. Just for comparison, uh, kind of typical living spaces tend to be in the 50 dB range, and sounds above kind of 55 to 60 are usually considered distracting or annoying. Noises in the range of 70 dB are usually considered loud. Interestingly, if I take this into my car and start the car and just have it idling, uh, the, the noise level is about 55 dB. And uh, when I put the stereo up at kind of moderate volumes, it goes to the 70 to 80 dB range. I've never taken sound measurements and I've never thought about them deeply at all. I do not have anything anywhere near qualifying as a calibrated noise source, but uh, you know these kind of face validity checks seem to be about right. So lastly, the LUX function, which measures illuminance in SI units of LUX. A LUX is one lumen per square meter. Again, kind of looking around the internet, it looks like office lighting is said to be in the range of 300 to 500 LUX. Uh, you can see here on the bench that uh, I'm in the 6 to 700 range. This is just right underneath some very bright LED lights. So, uh, you know, that seems to be about right. Outside overcast skies are, are said to be you know, around 1,000 lux, and direct sunlight is probably 30,000 lux or more. Taking this outside uh, in, in both kind of the overcast morning and then as the sun has come out this afternoon, you know, that seems to be about right for this for this meter. So again, I don't have a calibrated light source, but you know this this seems to pass muster. I did also check out the frequency range uh, of this meter as well. It's it's quite limited. The specifications uh, specify different levels of accuracy up through 200 kilohertz and it seemed to be accurate when I checked this with my function generator and frequency counter. Uh, above 200 kilohertz, it works for a while and then drops off around 3 to 400 kilohertz and just completely stops working. Uh, I didn't check the capacitance function on this. I have no reason to think that it won't work fine. Overall, what's, what's my impression of this meter? Well, so far, I, I like it. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not one of my amp probes. It's not a Bryman meter. It's certainly not a fluke meter. Uh, however, it's not bad and especially for $50. I could imagine this being a meter that I used for day-to-day -day work on my bench for many of the sorts of things I, I do. I couldn't imagine one of the cheaper units being something I use day-to-day. -day. This meter's functionally all right. It's a little bit better than all right. Uh, you know, it's got good accuracy, feels good. I suspect it will hold up, but only time will tell how reliable it will be. In a future video, I plan to open this one up and the cheaper model up and then one of my uh, more expensive meters, you know, a BK Precision or an Ampro meter, and look inside and compare the safety engineering uh, across, across models and across brands. Uh, in, until this, I'll withhold my ultimate judgment. But that said, the TP8229 looks pretty good from this initial testing. With a decent set of leads, this is a pretty cute meter for low energy work. I hope you've found this of interest. If so, please give it a big thumbs up below. And as always, thank you for watching.